Three years ago, the first case of a global plant virus was recorded, and it started to ravage most of our ecosystems. Eating food infected with the virus causes severe autoimmune diseases, and the loss of plant life has decreased the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere to 10%, which has increased the number of natural disasters all over the world. The world's leading research laboratories have been unsuccessful in developing a cure, and people are starting to think the planet is doomed. The only hope left is Project Gemini, developed by Dr. Stephen around two ancient alien artifacts discovered by paleontologists who assure the objects are four billion years old, before there was any kind of life on Earth. Stephen's team has recreated the super-tough materials that the sphere and the engine are made of and have made copies, and this engine has allowed them to build a ship that flew unmanned and found a suitable planet to terraform. The sphere is for creating life and works thanks to dozens of commands that the team has finally finished decoding. It's also proof that life on Earth was created by aliens. A team consisting of both doctors and military pilots will be traveling to create Earth 2.0 with the sphere and the solar system tests, which is several hundred light years from here. Stephen has a wife called Amy, who doesn't want him to go on this mission. On the day of the launch, he still comes to the base to try to stop Stephen from leaving, but she doesn't make it on time and must watch how the ship leaves the planet. When the vessel leaves the atmosphere, an unusual crack appears on the alien sphere, indicating they may not be alone. Using the alien engine technology, the ship opens a warping portal that allows them to jump across the universe. However, as soon as they make it to the other side, the systems indicate an error, they haven't arrived at tests, they're somewhere unknown. Stephen blames engineer Peter for this, claiming he made a mistake when he entered the coordinates so he's relieved of his duties for now. Moments later, while Stephen rests, he keeps thinking about Amy, but also about the first time he activated the sphere, which allowed him to see some weird humanoid form that quickly disappeared. Afterward, Stephen asks the team to try to set the jump trajectory to figure out where, but it's impossible to do because all their data is messed up, as if they moved between the third and fourth dimensions. Meanwhile, Peter leaves his bunker and takes one of the security cameras so he can inspect the sphere alone. At that moment, the computer announces someone has opened the repair airlock and that there's an unidentified object approaching. To everyone's shock, they suddenly see a frozen Peter floating outside. Doctor. David thinks Peter ended things because he couldn't live with his mistake, but Doctor. Leona refuses to believe it because she's known Peter for eight years and he wasn't that kind of guy. Stephen scolds her for crying over the guy that has doomed humanity, and orders her to take over Peter's duties from now on. Later, David shares that when his daughter died, he also almost ended things, but he thought he could be useful instead. Now that the mission is over he's feeling useless again, but Stephen promises him they'll find a solution. At that moment, the ship comes across a planet made of volcanic rock. It doesn't have oxygen but the outside environment isn't aggressive, meaning they'd only need breathing masks. Stephen thinks it's the perfect alternative to carry on their plan and is eager to land, but Captain Ryan stops him, pointing out they didn't do a proper examination of the planet yet, so Stephen is recklessly risking the safety of the crew. Stephen doesn't care though, and reminds everyone he's the one calling the shots here. The team will go down on a shuttle while Officer Richard stays on the mothership. As soon as the shuttle comes closer to the planet, they encounter a very aggressive storm, so they have to activate the braking thrusters to slow their fall. It'll also use up all their fuel and prevent them from coming back, but it's their only chance to survive. As the shuttle hits the ground, the crew passes out and Stephen dreams of the time he gifted Amy a bracelet made with a particular part of the old sphere, trying to connect the two most important things to him. Moments later, the crew wakes up and immediately gets back to work. The shuttle hasn't received critical damage, but the fuel is low and they're stuck here. Steven doesn't see the problem with this because they came to stay for four years, and even if they didn't land on the spot they wanted, he's sure they can use one of the huge caves as a dome for the sphere to be launched in. Meanwhile in the hidden corridors of the shuttle, a weird goo drops off the walls. In the mothership, Richard does an inspection of the other rooms and finds this goo as well together with the missing camera. Once everyone is properly suited up, 
the crew takes the sphere to the nearest cave and activates it successfully. Then they return to the shuttle to begin collecting data, but Ryan interrupts their work to announce martial law is in effect in the station. To explain his decision, he shares some files Richard sent him while the doctors were working. It's a video of Peter recording himself while he inspects the sphere so he can't be accused of mistakes later. When he opens the door to the engine, he finds something moving in the shadows that suddenly jumps on him and kills him before throwing him out of the ship. The camera can't capture the shape of this creature, but Richard explains he's checked all the footage and that alien has been with them since they left Earth because it traveled inside the sphere like the Trojan horse. It probably caused the failure during the jump, but it's not on the mothership anymore, it's gone down to the planet with the shuttle. Richard can track it because the alien causes interference in the electromagnetic field, explaining the bad recording. The discussion suddenly interrupted by David, who is noticing something weird on the system. The sphere is running a different program than the one they uploaded. Stephen wants to go back to the sphere, but Ryan stops him, reminding him that he won't allow him to lead anymore and accusing him of keeping secrets. Ryan reveals Richards also found footage of Steven seeing that weird shape back on Earth months ago, so he knew there was potential for a threat, and yet he told nobody, meaning Peter's death is his fault. Offended by this accusation, Steven rushes out of the room while thinking about all the work he and David put into this project. Steven hadn't been sure David should have come with them because he was still grieving, but David convinced him he was fine and wanted to make a better Earth to prevent other kids from dying like his daughter did. Moments later, Stephen meets with David and asks him to sneak out with him through the airlock to check on the sphere. David doesn't want to disobey Ryan, but Stephen changes his mind by reminding him of his daughter and the future of the planet. As soon as they make it to the cave, they notice the sphere is creating an alien life form faster than it created life on Earth because someone readjusted the settings. Stephen immediately begins working on the sphere's settings, ignoring David's pleas to leave and discuss things with everyone. At that moment, David notices on their radar that the alien is getting closer, so he fires a warning shot to try to make Stephen move. Stephen responds by taking out his own weapon, but before things can get ugly, they notice the aliens already entering the cave. After Stephen grabs a piece of the sphere to take with him, both men begin running away noticing the creatures getting closer because of its shadows and the noises it makes. They finally get a full view of it when they leave the cave, but before the creature can attack them, they manage to get back into the shuttle and shut the airlock. David calls Stephen out for risking their lives, but Stephen reminds him the sphere is more important and next time he won't hesitate to shoot. Then Ryan shows up to scold Stephen as well, and when Stephen explains they'll have to use force to stop him, Ryan punches him. Suddenly, the computer raises an alarm to let the crew know the module's integrity has been compromised. Leona leaves her room to check the issue and finds lots of goo in the corridor, only to suddenly be pulled back into a different area. It's Frank, who informs her the alien has made a hole in the low deck and now is in the lander. Very carefully, the pair makes their way to hide in the lab, where it's getting very hard to breathe. In a flash, the lights go out, and a strange noise can be heard coming from behind the plant units. This means the alien is here, so Frank pushes Leona out of the room, and as she runs down the corridor, she can hear Frank screams while the alien kills him. Leona meets with the rest of the team in the control room and tells them what happened, prompting Ryan to scream at Steven for bringing the alien back with him. The creature entered by making a hole in the hull, it also has damaged the generator, and the cameras aren't working, so they've lost contact with Richard and they don't have visuals on the rest of the ship. Their only solution is to make to go to the backup generator and reconnect everything, which is extremely difficult to pull off if they can't track the creature, prompting Steven to volunteer to go since it's his fault. With his weapon out, Steven carefully makes his way to the generator and manages to bring back the communication system. The team can track the alien now and warn Steven that it's near him. But as soon as Steven tries to leave, he begins hearing those noises. Luckily Ryan thinks fast and drags him back into the control room by using a metal rope. Then, the team makes a plan together to smoke the alien out of the ship. While Steven waits outside to play bait, Leona opens the airlocks followed by the lab door, 
rushing to hide in another room as the alien comes out. The creature quickly begins making its way through the airlocks, but when Richard tries to turn on the engine to burn it out, he can't because the alien is interfering with the Steven runs for his life and Leona comes to help him. But at that moment, the alien comes out and Richard regains access to the engine. Steven and Leona run back inside as the creature is hit by the fire. But this isn't enough to kill it and it tries to reach Steven, who is being dragged inside by David. The alien's tentacle hurts David's arm right as they close the door, leaving the creature's limb inside. While the beast returns to the cave, Ryan shuts the airlocks and the others get to reseal the hole. Moments later, the team finds Frank's body, and while Leona decides to end things for herself because of her grief, Stephen thinks about Amy again. She had tried to convince him not to leave by explaining she was working on a vaccine, but more importantly, she was pregnant, yet this was still enough to make Stephen stay because saving Earth was more important than his personal life. David goes to the lab to get his wound bandaged and Stephen brings the tentacle to study it. He discovers the creature is a biorobot made from the same material as the sphere, which means the sphere's goal has always been to make these beasts. Stephen informs David that the tentacle has infected him with a bacteria with a very powerful defense mechanism, meaning his blood now holds the key to making a vaccine to save Earth. As soon as Stephen makes a cut on the tentacle, the lights go crazy and he remembers the image he saw back on Earth, meaning the alien is a transponder, and this is the way his race colonizes planets. Stephen decides they need to kill the alien and restore the sphere's settings, but Ryan locks him up in the lab and tells him he's under arrest for putting everyone's life at risk. Ryan points out lives are expendable to Stephen, and David agrees, saying Stephen only wants to play hero and he never cared about humanity. This makes Stephen remember her last argument with Amy, who accused him of having a savior complex before throwing her bracelet away. Stephen continues to do his research in the lab and gets a theory that Richard confirms when he checks the travel logs. They didn't jump through space, they jumped through time. They're still on Earth but four billion years in the past before life existed, and the clone sphere they brought is the same one the paleontologists find later in the future. Ignoring the fact David's wound is getting worse, Stephen gets excited when he realizes the sphere fragment he grabbed earlier is the same one he uses in the future to make Amy's bracelet, so he proceeds to write a message on it to teach Amy how to activate the sphere they left behind. Meanwhile in the present, Amy shows up at Stephen's lab while trying to deal with the news saying the team failed their mission. Suddenly Richard brings worrisome news to Stephen. Ryan is preparing explosives to blow up the sphere and has turned off his radio to avoid complaints. Stephen asks Richard to reopen the airlock so he can get out and as soon as he finds Ryan with the bombs, he begins explaining they can make a better plan than this. Their conversations interrupted by a shot that kills Ryan out of the blue. It's David, who's escaped through the airlock and has gone deranged because of the infection, making him think the alien has chosen him to help it makes things right because humans are a malfunction from the sphere. Stephen throws Leona's Rubik cube at the wall to distract David and lands a shot on him, prompting David to run away wounded. Afterward, Stephen activates the bomb before going outside to shoot a flare to get the alien's attention. Stephen makes it chase him to the control room and locks it up there, but as he runs down the corridor, David opens fire on him and pushes him into hiding. At that moment, the alien breaks down the door and approaches Stephen, who manages to get it off him with a quick shot. The alien chases Stephen as he begins to run away, and when he makes it back to the control room, he bumps into David, who tries to kill him. His actions are stopped by the alien showing up and killing him first, giving Stephen the chance to run out of the shuttle right before the bomb finally explodes and kills the beast. Stephen passes out outside for a few seconds and is woken up by Richard trying to contact anyone alive. Richard wants to come to save him, but the storm is too strong and Stephen tells him to stay back while he returns to the cave to use the sphere. Meanwhile in the present, Amy finds her bracelet again and finally notices the message, so she uses it to activate the sphere as well. At that moment, husband and wife meet again in a fusion of past and present, and Stephen hurries to share the formula for the vaccine before expressing his love right as the connection ends. Stephen dies in the cave because of the lack of oxygen, 
and Amy cries when she understands she's a widow now. Many months later, Amy is raising a very healthy baby thanks to the vaccine that is now helping the earth to become a better place.